uh, fall in, in fear and trembling, but God is telling us to be strong, Amen. be of good courage, because he is in control. He is the one who has got all this under his eye. There's nothing going on that he's not aware of. All we have to do is get on board. Amen. Again, I thank Pastor for this opportunity, this privilege to stand behind the sacred desk. And I'm just, just always so blessed by what God does. Um, Danielle sang the song, and, and, and she gave the word of prophecy, said now is the time for us to join together in unity. And the body of Christ cannot faint and fall away. There is so much division, and we're going to talk about that today a little bit. And just want to know, want you to know that God is serious right now. And Jamie just said it. He wants to know who's on board. He wants to know, are you going to follow him? Or are you going to have your own way? You're going to be led by your flesh, or you're going to be led by your spirit? Is it all about you, or is it all about Jesus? He wants you to know that the devil is pulling out all his shots. He's doing everything he can to get you distracted, to keep your focus away I think about the day that Pastor fell on her face before the Lord because she was grieved. She had talked to some schoolmates and they were dealing and dabbling into witchcraft and demonology and, and all kinds of things like that. And she was talking about how it just grieved her so much she couldn't function as, as the way she should and she couldn't sleep. Well, the Lord has brought other people to me who's saying the same thing is grieving them because of the demonic rise and how he's getting into families and trying to move to get them confused. There's a form, the, the Bible says there's a way that seems right before the Lord, but the end thereof is death. And God wants us to be clear on one thing. He is the one and only true and living God. The only way to get to him is through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what he's telling us. If you don't want to buy that, then See ya. Pray you don't go to hell, but see ya. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Father God, in Jesus' name, I just want to thank you, Lord. I thank you for your blessing of this praise and worship service. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy toward us, and I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in our life, that you love us so much that you go out of your way to try and draw us back to you so that none should be lost. In Jesus' name, I pray that you anoint these lips. Let it be more of you and less of me, Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We've established that the world is in a crisis situation right now. The economy is suffering. Somebody said on the radio the other day that if China, Japan, and some of the other countries that we owe money to were to pull their cards and say, okay, we want to be paid and we want to be paid now, America would be in bankruptcy. Families and relationships are suffering. Families do not have the strength that they use. They don't affect the community like they used to because there's so much division. There's so much me, I, and my, and not what can we do to work together. Danielle was talking about unity. We saw that in the word. We saw it in two ways in the word, that the Tower of the Babel, God came down and he said, they are in unity. And even though they were going against the will of God, he said, they are in unity. And this thing that they do, they will see it come to pass. Then we saw it again in the upper room when they were all on one accord. The Holy Ghost fell. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost fell, 3,000 souls got saved. So which side are you on? He said in this word, I offer you life, I offer you death. Choose you this day who you will serve. God has given us the miracle of technology, but the enemy is running rampant with that technology. He's got our kids deceived. They can't do anything. They can't only think for themselves, and they're being led down a path of destruction, and the parents aren't always there to help these kids because they're letting them do whatever they want. They're not monitoring them. They're not checking. I get on my son all the time. Know what your kids are watching with all this finger... Godly principles are being replaced with demonic principles. It's about all about whatever pleases the flesh. It's not all about what pleases God. Our nation is divided. A house divided against itself cannot stand. 
This upcoming election has been a tool of the enemy. He has got church people pitting against one another. It doesn't matter who's in the office. There's still a man. God never told us to look the man to settle everything that concerns us, to get our answers. There is not one man they can put in that office, be he Democrat or Republican, who has the answer to the ills of this country. There's not one man. It is God, and nobody else can do it but him. Hallelujah. We have to understand that the predictions that God had made back over 5,000 years ago, when, or 3,000 years ago, when prophets were coming forth and bringing forth the word, it is all coming to pass right now. You look at the news, read your newspaper, and take up your Bible, and you can say, oh yeah, that's exactly what he said. Over the past year, I have heard several ministers preach on this. And one of them is Jonathan Kahn, who was Amen. one of the men that uh, Jamie was trying to get to come here for the a day of prayer, that weekend of day of prayer. Jonathan Kahn went to the World Trade Center in New York, and God gave him a revelation of Isaiah 9:10, showing him how the Word of God was coming to pass right here in America based on our disobedience, based on our lack of knowledge, based on uh, our refusal to follow him. It's all about us. We can do, we are going to make it happen, whatever. He, there, Jonathan Kahn showed a video of things that actually took place in the news that lined up with Isaiah 9, 10. And so I'm saying, if you haven't seen it, if you have never heard of it, go to um, the website, look up Sid Roth, and look up uh, in, under archives and look up the uh, interview with Jonathan Kahn. It is worth the look and it'll make you think. Amen. Hallelujah. Jonathan Kahn also wrote a book called The Harbinger and the word harbinger means warning. And just so happened that one of his members became my student aide at the college so she went to him and told him that I had seen him and I was impressed with his message. She got me an autographed copy of that book, praise God. The signs are clear, Jesus is coming soon. The Bible tells us in Matthew 24 and 14. You all have to bear with me with the Bible because I usually have my scripture written out but my internet's down. Okay, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We are in the end times, and as I said, Jesus is coming soon. The gospel is being preached all around the world with the 24-hour telephone uh, television networks and with satellites and everything. There's not very many places, I don't believe, on the earth that the gospel isn't preached in even third world countries where they don't have too much technology or anything. They have uh, people that go around with videos and, and different equipment that will teach them about the Word of God. Okay, I'm convinced that the answer to all the ills of this nation and of this world are not found in the White House regardless to who the president is, nor in any kingdom wherever there is a king or a queen. The answer that ails this country, the answers and the remedy is right here. How many people do not read this book? They don't respect this book. They don't honor it. They don't know anything about it. We need to, I mean, you know enough scripture maybe to get by, but you don't study it. We don't, we don't. We're all guilty. And if we don't take time to get in here, we'll never know the God of this book and we'll never know the mind of God and what he wants for us in our individual lives and in our country and in the world. We forget that our leaders are just men and that they don't have any uh, answers. Without God in their life, they're like the blind leading the blind. But God knows their hearts. He knows who will listen to him and he knows who will not listen to him. He's the one who makes the decision 
We think we put our vote in, and I'm not telling you not to vote. I think it's wonderful that we have the privilege to vote. Many people have died for us to have the privilege to vote. But what I'm saying is, when you go into that vo voting booth, do not say, I'm voting for this man or that man because of something that has to do with the earth. Think about what is it that God wants Amen. and ask him, which button should I push? And when you push that button, that man will get into office, and whether we like him or not, he's still our president. Keep your mouth off our leaders. The Bible warns you of that. People are talking all this negative stuff about our president. They're talking all this negative stuff about the incumbents and everybody else. They are God's business. They are not our business. Do not touch them with your mouth. What you need to do is be praying for them. If your president is not functioning in the way that you want him to function, pray for him. The king's heart is in the Lord's hand. He can turn it any way he chooses. If you don't pray for him and he doesn't get it right, don't complain. Don't say anything. God sees the condition that we're in. He sees it all. And he's reminding us on a daily basis in some way or another, that we are not of this world. We are in his kingdom. We are in the kingdom of God, and it works on functions on a different governmental plan. So no matter what is going on in our government, whether they're crooked or whether they're good, good people, doesn't matter what's going on in our economy, whether we're broke or whether we have plenty. Some people seem like they, it's like a giant tilt. Some people have much, and some have little, okay? God knows, but have you ever noticed when you had little, God never failed you. I never missed a meal when I had nothing. I had shelter, couldn't even pay the rent, but I had covered. God took care of me. Our focus should be on God and nothing else but God. In this time, instead of being fearful, we need to be rejoicing. We need to rejoice that it's as good as it is. When we vote, don't vote as a Democrat or a Republican. Vote as I am from the kingdom of God and I'm going to vote for who I believe God wants me to vote for. We should not lose hope because our hope is in Jesus Christ. He wants to deliver us from fear. He wants to deliver us from the unknown. He wants us to know that it is he that is in us who is greater than he that's in the world. And he's with us no matter what. And he'll never leave us or forsake us. There are many benefits to being in the kingdom of God. I recently heard a story, and I'm not sure if this is in the Bible or not, but it tells about several years ago, millions of Jews were killed in Israel. And the people that were Christians, Jews or whatever Christians, were not killed. So only the people that were not serving God got killed. It's a warning there to be under the covering of God. Isaiah 59.1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and me, between me, you and your God, and your sins have his face from you that he will not hear. Hearken to me in Isaiah 51.1. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock which you are hewn. The rock is Jesus. You are protected and, and secure because you have accepted Jesus Christ. So look to that rock from which you've been cut out of and to hold on, to hold of the pit which you were digged. God has put you in that place where you are called heir. He's put you in that place where you are called child of God. And I believe that what God is saying here is remember who you are and who, who you are. In Isaiah 49, 16, it says, Behold, I have carved you in the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. He's got his destiny for you right in his hand. In Isaiah Highest of heights to the depths of the sea.